<laughs> Mabuhay everybody and thank you so much for tuning in uh, from those of you uh, tuning in from around the world. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to you. This is the continuation of the Giving Talents Countdown. I am so excited today because I have my great friend who will be joining us and share a little bit about who she is and, and also how we met too. I'm telling you, I am so inspired by this great friend and her name is Leona Brown and um, very special because she has done great things uh, in her community but also uh, with the people to whom she served. So uh, this is Giving Talent and for those of you this is your first time learning about Giving Talent. This is a actually uh, came out of Giving Tuesday and Giving Tuesday is the world's uh, most trusted and the largest movement in the world. They are reaching about 91 countries and Giving Talents right now is being uh, accessed by about 11 countries and we just started. And so you might think, what is giving talent? Well, it really is as simple as the name. We are asking people to give one hour of your time uh, and anything that you can do to someone or causes or organizations that you care about. So for example, it could be as simple as babysitting, uh, cleaning the beach, or cooking for someone, or inviting someone for a cup of coffee, uh, and everything goes. So give one hour of your time, and today I am uh, going, we are going to have a fun conversation with Leona Brown. So everyone, I would love for you to meet my great friend, Leona Brown. Leona, so welcome. And please tell us a little, I know you, but the, the world, the audience would like to get to know you. Please. <clears throat> Hi everybody, my name is Leona Brown. I am Gitsan through my parents, and I'm Nishka through my grandparents. And I live on the unceded territories of Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam. And I do consider myself a refugee to these territories because I was displaced in my own nation. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in Vancouver since 1995 um, and pretty assimilated to society. So I haven't really started my journey until about 2013 when Truth and Reconciliation happened here and we heard the stories um, of residential schools and I, I began my journey then. Mm -hmm. um, but only more recently have I um, really delved into my advocacy work that I, I do everywhere, um, probably since about 2017-ish and definitely before COVID hit. I really got involved with the Vancouver School Board and the Vancouver City Council committees and uh, um, doing a lot of conversations with Parks Board and acquiring land space for um, Indigenous learning. So it's been quite a journey for me these past few years. And then with all my advocacy work, of course, um, I was advised to maybe run for City Council and um, but the whole entire year I was asked to run for parks and city council and I just thought if I'm going to run I'm going to run for mayor and I didn't really decide till the very last minute to run literally the last week of registration then I finally signed in and I'm like okay we're going to do it let's go and that that journey was very um, educational and it was a lot of fun meeting a whole bunch of new people, including yourself, Ami, mm -hmm. um, making these great connections in the community and, and really seeing what more can I do with um, the networks that I've created. 
Yeah, I am actually, Leona, thank you for mentioning that because um, through that journey um, that you and I got connected and I was so impressed and really inspired by you, uh, Leona, because you, you know, running for, for any elections, uh, whether it is municipal, provincial or uh, federal, it's not it's not a task that you can simply do it. It takes a lot of guts. And Leona, you have a lot of guts. And I was so inspired your story on how your community mm -hmm. uh, came around you and supported you. Tell us a little bit about why this is so important and what can we learn about this, Leona? So with the election run, it was fairly scary and it was um, an idea I kind of put forward to an elders group that meets at the Mother Center um, and these are all um, much older indigenous women, um, many of them from my own community community in Gitsan territory but um, when I, I contemplated about running for mayor they really encouraged me and, and, and they said it was a great thing to do and they immediately they they've asked what can they do to help and um and support me and then when i officially announced that i i made the application for mayor everybody cheered and really very supportive and um wanting to see what they could do to help me and i couldn't really think of anything at the time but other than spread the word encourage everybody to vote yeah. um because i know with indigenous peoples the voting rarely happens if at all um, and i wanted to make uh, make the campaign around just getting people to vote but I, it was much more than that after so the elders really surrounded me and supported me and after the election they encouraged me to um, if i were to run again for anything to let them know and, and they'll figure out um, a way to help me campaign better this time because this was last very last minute and anything that i want to run for again they, they'll be there to support me in any way they can and that's what i love about uh for those of you who are listening um, this is my friend leona brown and this is at the continuation of the giving talent and what i love about uh the story i'm sure you can resonate uh, with Leona's story and some of you who maybe are in uh, in Canada as refugees or new immigrants, you can resonate how difficult that is when you are displaced, as Leona used it, you know, um, displaced, displaced from her own community. And so in this space, I think that's why we are bringing community together by giving one hour of your time to anyone, anything uh, or organization that you care about uh, so that in one hour we can uh, inspire this outrageous generosity. And this is what Leona is saying, is this outrageous generosity that she experienced by having the elders and the entire community cheering her on, supporting her on. So the question is, who are the people in your community uh, that are cheering you on? And if you can't find one, maybe it's a, a good time to start bringing and, and asking uh, and meeting that community. So Leona, I'm so inspired by, by your story. Um, and I think the last time I talked to you, I said, Leona, do you have any, uh, any idea what you might, what you might uh, do? Tell us a little bit, I mean, to you and your community, do you think uh, giving talent and one hour will make a difference. I, I absolutely think so, because um, in meeting my elders group at the Mother Center, it was just an opportunity where I came in to, um, you know, provide uh, 
some sample teas and to say hello to everybody. And we're, we were creating a garden next to the Mother's Center. Wow. Um, and we wanted to have some advice from the elders if, if they had any plant knowledge or um, any kind of conversations that they could share. Um, that was the first time I went to meet with them. And it was, it was thrilling to see such a huge group of indigenous elders um, you don't see that very often around Vancouver. But this group is very close knit, and they're they're very kind and welcoming. And and this was probably about um, way earlier this year in January, I think. And and I've been welcomed into their circle, and they they ask for me to come, and um, they remind me when their dinners are, their luncheons are, and I just go in now, and I'm I'm in there all the time whenever I can, and and just conversate with the elders and, and they want to know what I'm doing and um, in community and and I go and see what they're doing and then I try to figure out how can I help them. And typically lately it's been when I have an abundance of like fish, um, I'll bring extra jars of fish to share with the elders there, which means a lot to them because it's our cultural food. And I, and I actually had one time when they had um, their 20th anniversary, the Mother Center, they had an abundance of um, whole fish that was left over, uh, probably about eight of them that I was able to take home myself um, because they didn't know what else to do with them. So I brought them home, immediately jarred them that night. So it took me like three or four hours, maybe even more, six hours, because I made like a case and a half from the fish that they gave me. I jarred them immediately and then I brought them back the next day to, to share with the elders again. I'm like, I can't, I have a whole, much, whole bunch of fish at home already. So I, I wanted to just have that opportunity to jar it and give it back to them because they're having that cultural food is very important to them. Wow. As I was listening to you, if this is the first time I've heard about giving talents, Leona, you've already given the audience and myself a lot of ideas uh, by just very short period, like listening, like sharing uh, your abundance and, uh, and mentorship and exchange knowledge. This is so important to us, especially in the older generation and the young generation. We have lost that a sense of, you know, community. It seems to me that the young people are on the one side and then the older people on the other side and there is a gap in between. But what the elders, and this is what really I love about indigenous people, because they really know how to uh, how to share not just the abundance but also knowledge mm -hmm. uh, knowledge of how to heal how to fish how to find uh, resources from the ground from the, the earth right and this is what i love about uh, the culture and i know a lot about the culture, but I'm still learning. And every time I talk to you, Leona, I learn something. Uh, and so that is your outrageous generosity. And this year, we are inspiring people with your story, Leona, uh, mm -hmm. to have this outrageous generosity and give one hour of their time. And this video will be will be viewed uh, from around the world. And uh, so in the passing, in the last uh, stage, what would you like uh, for people? Do you have one last thing that you want to inspire others? I think it's when we're giving our time, we have to be open-minded about the situation that we go into as well. Um, this, especially if we're going to help um, people that are maybe low income. I've done a lot of soup kitchens that, that helping people come get some soup, and um, it's understanding, you know, that you know, some people might not be too pleased or look too happy, but it's trying to give them a smile and say, you know, have a good day, and and really showing a caring from your heart. Yeah. not just the fact that you're giving an hour and that's it but like having 
empathy for the, any situation that you put yourself in to give time for and, and providing your talent and, and showing people not only just that you're um, helping others, but you're you wanting to share your talents too, right? So you you want to show the passion and the work that you do, um, and just be empathetic that some people might not be open to it. And in this day and age of COVID, there's a lot of anxiety around being around each other still, yeah, and it's just. Having that genuine smile and happiness of doing what you're doing. Wow. And, and absolutely, Leona, you are right. And for those of you who are listening, I think that smile is a universal language. And, you know, someone who, whom you are helping, just because they're not... Uh, smiling back at you that does not mean that they're not appreciating you um, my husband has this quote which I love one hour can change a lifetime and certainly this is true with me um, I have become the person that I am because of the people who has given me one hour of their time, their generous time. So with this, I want to thank you so much, Leona, for being my absolutely favorite guests. And I, uh, I am so grateful to have met you. I am so grateful that we have become great friends. Mm -hmm. And I am looking forward to meeting uh, some of the people you in your community and you are in mine so yeah. <clears throat> thank you so much and everyone thank you for tuning in i so appreciate you and please don't forget to sign in uh, to participate on november 29 from 1 to 2 p.m your local time yeah. anything will do Thank you so, so much and have a wonderful time, a wonderful day. Goodbye. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>